Sultry retro vibes meets modern soul R&B. You're watching Encore and that's what's coming up on this week's music show. Swedish Iranian singer-songwriter Snow Allegra has worked with Common, been sampled by Drake and was mentored by Prince. So it's no wonder that her star is on the rise. She's currently on tour promoting her debut album Feels, infused with her velvety nostalgic sound. Snow Allegra, welcome to the Hi. show. Thanks Thank for you. having Thank me. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Your debut album is called Feels. What's Correct. giving you the feels right now? <sighs> Everything. Um, I get so inspired by, like, basically a anything I'm, I'm going through. I, my, my lyrics are really honest, so I've just been writing about my life, basically. Your life. Okay, yeah. now you've described your sound as a cinematic soul. Others have said there are elements of uh, film noir, what does that mean exactly? Cinematic soul, can you break that down perhaps? Well, I've been really inspired musically by so uh, soundtracks and movies growing up. So um, I love big strings and orchestras and pads and um, just like big arrangements. And I always, you know, sometimes I mute my music, mute my vocals when I make my songs to feel like if the music would fit in a movie. And um, yeah, I just try to write my story to that. And I don't know, I guess that's why I call it Cinematic Soul. Well, that, perhaps that's the next step in your career, writing, scoring films. Who that knows? would be a dream. <laughs> that's a dream. Yes. Right, well, let's get a, a better feel for your sound now. This is Snow Allegra's latest single, Nothing Burns Like the Cold, featuring Vince Staples. You probably had a wild day. So you should make your way to my place. And we can talk about the things you want to talk about. You know, I know, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, I know, you know. That was Snow Allegra's Nothing Burns Like the Cold featuring Vince Staples. And that uh, samples Ike's Rap 2 from the Isaac Hayes uh, album uh, Black Moses. Uh, Snow, you've said it's important to connect the dots of where you're from in everything you do. Uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, you are from Sweden, but your parents are Iranian. Uh, yes. You live in L.A. and mm -hmm. you were telling me off air that uh, you also lived in London, London before. before moving to L.A. Yes. So how does this uh, international background influence your music? Uh, definitely a lot, you know, um, growing up in Sweden um, has shaped, you know, my, my sense of melody, like the, the, my melancholy and my music, um, you know, the gloomy win winters over there. And then being Iranian, um, I take so much of the, the poetic language and the warmth of the culture. And I think also something I noticed moving to LA or anywhere I am in the world, almost every day somebody asks me where I'm from. And then when I say I'm from Sweden, they, they react because I don't look Swedish. And then I explain that and I'm- And what does a Swedish person look like is perhaps the question you would throw back at Yeah, I mean, a native, them, you know. of course, like, because yeah. they think that a People Swedish- People have an image of- Yeah, like you're blonde and you're more, eye. you know, fair and mm -hmm. exactly. and. But, but I am Iranian, so that's why I look the way I do. So I always have to explain myself, and I have an accent. So I just thought it's important to connect the dots of where I'm from and the music too, and, and bring uh, all the elements to it. Okay, well, yeah. uh, now when I think of Sweden, uh, I think of a, a pop factory, a, a yes. hit-making factory yeah. that churned out <laughs> the likes of ABBA, mm -hmm. uh, Roxette, Ace mm -hmm. of Base, Robin, um, and of course, uh, massive songwriter-producers yeah. like Dennis Pop Max and Martin. Max Martin, yeah. of course, who was, um, who was uh, influenced by Dennis Pop. So how do you explain how Sweden is able to churn out the hits? Consistently. <laughs> I mean, it's something the in decades. the water, I guess, like everybody says, just something in the water. <laughs> I don't know. Um, um, I'm a big fan of all those people that you mentioned, and um, I definitely grew up, um, you know, admiring that that sensibility and, and the the pop melody sensibility. But then, you know, moving away from Sweden, I got more into hanging around with people that do more soul music and, and all of that. So it's been the best of bo both worlds for me personally. 
Yeah. You were talking to me off air um, before the show went live um, uh, about uh, how you were you were in Sweden recently mm-hmm. and you played uh, you played a gig to yeah, a, to a, a very home, intimate gig, home yeah. crowd. What was that like? How were the Swedes? You know, sort of um, how have they accepted you as a as an artist? They were incredibly warm and sweet and loving, and they were singing along. I was just so surprised. They you know, know all the words. They knew the words. They were cheering, and I just felt so much love. It was uh, honestly like a very one of the most memorable nights of my life. And this whole tour so far, the little mini tour I've been on, has been so amazing. Just seeing people singing along to your songs is very surreal. And no doubt you yeah. uh, you'll be looking forward to to seeing how a Paris crowd uh, yes. reacts at the uh, Maroquinerie, uh, which is where you'll be playing. Now, um, you've worked with Common Prince. We've been mentored you were mentored by Prince um, yes. before he passed away, uh, and you worked with uh, the producer No ID among mm-hmm. many others. He was uh, he was behind uh, sort of the the production behind uh, your album Feels. He yeah, is my executive producer on my What's project. What's some of the the best advice that all of these heavyweights have given you. I mean, that's that's an amazing, uh, an amazing roster of people to work with right there. Yeah, I'm very extremely lucky. Um, crazy enough, the the heavyweighters are the ones that, like No ID and Prince, um, they're the people who who encourage me the most to be just myself and not try to change me so much. And thought I've been good the way I am, um, while, you know. It can be the other way around in the industry where people try to change you all the time. So it's been very like a, a nice contrast and healthy to to have those voices in my life uh, while I'm meeting all these other demons. <laughs> <laughs> so these legends, they haven't tried to sort of mold you into something that you don't want to be. No. So you've been able yeah, to, to keep been it blessing. real. Yeah. Definitely. (laughs) Well, speaking of icons, these funky divas gave us the soundtrack to the 90s with their glossy R&B. Legendary girl group En Vogue are dropping their first album in nearly 15 years, teaming up with the likes of Snoop Dogg, Raphael Sadiq and Neo. Electric Cafe puts their trademark pristine harmonies front and centre. Check them out on Rocket. On Vogue with Rocket there. I was lucky enough to uh, catch them live last year, and I have to say those ladies have still got it. Um, Snow, I know you're a 90s fan. Who are some of your favorite artists from uh, from that era, the, the golden age of R&B? Um, I would say Brandy and, and Lauren Hill oh, was wow. probably my bigger influences from that era. And a little bit earlier, it was Whitney, of course, and... Yeah, yeah. I think anyone who sort of grew up in the late '80s, early '90s was uh, was a huge fan of uh, huge fan of Whitney Houston and all yeah. the, the massive uh, divas, R and B yeah. divas, right? Mm-hmm. Congolese rapper Maître Gims is back in the charts with his third solo album, Ceinture Noire. The star is on fire with this radio-ready double disc featuring a whopping, whopping 40 tracks and three different album covers. The chart topper is a chameleon uh, cooking up a melting pot of different sounds. He reunites with French rapper Sofiane on his latest single, Lou Garou. <laughs> Je vais te briser le coup parce que la vie m'a mis des coups j'arrête pas de me prendre la tête avec des gens qui pensent me connaître comme mes parents Ouais je suis pas où je manifeste peu d'amour j'ai toujours pas trouvé les mots C'est voilà oui ou voilà nous du moins y'a quoi après la mort C'est la fouille les dinero C'est le uno mon numéro Pour Adam à Dieu le On a commencé ça sous le sous le solo dans le zoo Évitez la zone Ne vieux mettez la zone ça gratte à la maison Ça devient très très grave Le démon se branle quand les hommes s'égarent Restons sur nos gardes Je pense pas qu'on soit dans un sketch de garde Tu t'appelles la garde Laisse-moi te dire que les câlins ça me gave Les hommes même voir que les jambes s'égarent now, uh, Snow, you were telling me earlier on that uh, you're not familiar with Maître Gims, but is there any, um, are there any French artists that you, uh, that you like listening to? Um? I listen to a lot. Like, I have this playlist. I can't remember all the names right now, but I love how it sounds, like yeah. French R&B and, and hip-hop. French hip-hop. Yeah. yeah. I love the language. I mean, it's obviously one of the most beautiful languages it's in the world. It's a beautiful language. So. Indeed. <laughs> 
And finally, British singer-songwriter Kate Nash is back in the spotlight, sharing her first record in five years. Yesterday Was Forever is an independent, crowd-funded release. A sunny blend of bouncy, guitar-driven pop, the new material, is inspired by the diary she kept as a teenage girl. We'll leave you with a clip of Kate Nash's single, Drink About You. Once again, thank you very much to our guest, Snow Allegra. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. Now catch her on her European tour and make sure you check out the fabulous debut disc, Feels. Catch up with past music shows on our website and stay in touch on social media. Keep it right here on France 24.